And yes, we have like 10 minutes to go over this, right? But it's really not that bad. The first one is what we call the rational zero test. And what the rational zero test tells us is that given a polynomial, given a polynomial, we can determine all of the possible rational zeros. So to do that, what we're basically going to do is take the factors plus or minus of p over q. Now I might say, what is p and what is q? Well, your constant is going to be p. And your coefficient is going to be q. So remember, factors are numbers that divide into another number. p is your constant of your polynomial. q is your leading coefficient for all polynomials. Whatever the p is constant, q is your leading coefficient. So remember, factors are numbers that evenly divide into another one, correct? So let's write out the factors of p. Well, what we have is plus or minus 8. You have um, plus or minus 4, comma, plus or minus 2, comma, plus or minus 1. Would everybody agree with me? Yes? Is 8 a factor of 8? Does 8 divide into 8? Yes. Does 4 divide into 8? Yes. Does 2? Or does positive 2 and negative 2 both divide into 8? Yes. Does plus or minus 1 divide into 8? Yes. So all you do is list all the factors of your constant divided by the factors of your leading coefficient. Well, the only factors of 1 are plus or minus 1. Okay. Then what you simply do is write in all of the possibilities of all of your p's over your q's. So we could have plus or minus 8 over 1, plus or minus 4 over 1, plus or minus 2 over 1, and plus or minus 1 over 1. Do you guys see how I just put every numerator over the denominator? Yes? If you had more than one denominator, you'd have to do it for both denominators. Okay. So for instance, let's say this was 2, and you had plus or minus 2. Then I'd have to do plus or minus 8 over 2, comma, plus or minus 4 over 2. Does everybody see the pattern that I'm kind of creating? If you had another number, like for instance, if this was 2. If this number was 2, you would have two factors, 2 and 1. You'd have to put the 8 over the 1 and the 8 over the 2. Does that make sense? Yes? No? I mean, OK. I'm saying if this was 2, that means you'd have two different factors in the denominator. However many factors are in Q, you have to put your P over both of them, if that was the case. But for this problem, that's not the case, because 1 is the only factor for Q. So now we just go and simplify. So what this states, again, the rational zero test, what it states, this tells you all the possible rational zeros. And the reason why I want to present you guys with the polynomial of the answer, we know what the rational zeros are, don't we? We know what the rational zeros are. The rational zeros are negative 4, 1, and 2. Are those all numbers that are represented in this rational zero test? Yes. And that's exactly what it tells you. It doesn't tell you what the zeros are. It just tells you what the possible zeros are. And that's it, though. For your answer, that's all you guys would include, is just the plus or minus of all the possible zeros. OK? That's all you're doing. OK, the next one. <clears throat> 